Hey guys, welcome to Wednesday. It is Wednesday, right? It's Wednesday. This is... Oh man, this is this is going to be a variety show tonight because I have a couple, a couple things to talk about in show. Um, one of which is super dumb, but I find it hilarious. Okay, first of all... Is it your wife? It's not my wife. <laughs> she is hilarious. She's not dumb. Uh, let's see. So we've got... Look at this guy. Look what I discovered recently, thanks to just a random tweet. I, I didn't know there were long neck turtles, but but there are. And look at that texture, and look at how it's on a long cylinder and stretched in areas and stuff. And that's great, because it's so much like Skola's arms. And uh, yeah. I want to make this exact texture and put it on Skola's arms, and it's going to be great. So I'm going to use a new technique that I've known about for many, many years, and for some reason I've just never done. Uh, so I've got this, I've got this, this plane. Look at this. It's just a plane, a very plain plane. Uh, and I'm going to put a design on it. Meh, meh, meh. And then the idea is I grab that texture and it becomes an alpha that I could stamp all over the arm. So, uh, divide it one more time. All right, so, uh, let's see. How am I gonna do this? Uh, for some reason, ZBrush is not letting me uh, put, put uh, my, resize my ZBrush. What? Why? You know? Why? I can't tell you why. Hold on, I'm trying to move my um, chat in a place where it's not going to get erased. Nope. Not doing it. Okay, fine. Nothing's going to move anywhere. Uh, Seve Diago. Hello, Seve. Uh, and Geraldo. Late streaming for you. Yes. That is the thing that really sucks about living on the west coast of the United of States, is that after work my time is just super late everywhere else in the rest of the world. I wish I lived on the east coast or in England where it's like more middle-ish for people. Linda, hello. Uh, Seve did two more paintings, excellent. Fat Cat, hello. All right, uh, oh right, I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do here because I want to have this reference up and available. Oh, and that made, look at that. I moved it and now the go, the magnifying glass went away. Oh, what is, oh, weird. What is going on? Huh. Make that go away, but then when I try to use it, it goes away. Wow, this is a this is a super cool uh, imaging system here. Okay, I'm just gonna close up like this. Move it down here. Stupid trick. All right. I mean, Seve says I'm getting better at painting and drawing. Excellent. Getting better uh, is great. Feels great, doesn't it? Do I need a different color background? Maybe I just need to change that. That's better. And, oh, but I, I can't, since I can't resize my ZBrush at all, every time I hit the canvas, this guy goes away. Okay, so there's a super annoying workaround. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. Um, under document, you can, Put a image in the background, right? It's document. Is it draw? <sighs> All right. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and try to figure that out. I'm just gonna hide this down here where you guys can't see it. Trust me, I'm looking at this thing the whole time. 
Okay, and I mean, what it basically is. Oh, it's not that. Let's uh, change our alpha there. So I need a good way to do just like a field of bumps that I can then play with. Dottie, welcome. Seve says, do you have Tumblr now? Uh, I've had Tumblr for a long time. I just haven't looked at it in, I don't know, a year or so. I'm sure it still exists. All right, inflate might be the way to go to make these little nubbins. Another alternative is to use the damn standard. I kind of want it to fade off around the edges because I'm going to be tiling it. But first, I'm just trying to uh, trying to establish exactly how I'm going to make this texture. That again, I can't zoom in on because that thing. lines that go so many directions and so many different sizes of lumps like it's pretty much cobble cobblestone feels like Alita, hello. Hey, I want to do a poll. How many people are here? Nine people. Okay, here's a super scientific poll of nine people. Uh, if I were to move one of my streams, probably the weekend one, to Twitch, would you guys uh, watch it there? Like, uh, how would you know? You'd have to, you'd have to like heart my channel. There's like something that's kind of like the equivalent of subscribing on um, Twitch. Just give me a yes or a no. Would you make the effort to try to follow me over to Twitch? Linda says, yes. Alitha says, I don't do Twitch, but don't let that hold you back. Alitha, when you say you don't do Twitch, does that mean that you're opposed to Twitch in some way? Or just that you have not, at, until this point in your life, done it? And so you don't want to go figure out some new, yet another uh, content delivery platform on the internet. Because to me, that would, that would be the biggest um, barrier for me if I wasn't already following some people on Twitch. Um, yeah, it's like, there's just, there's so many things out there. I don't want to do yet another thing where I'd have to, like, make a username and a password and... Uh, why can't there just be a universal, like the, like the Oasis 
from Ready Player One, where it's just like, you just have one account. Yeah, you should just use her social security number. Uh, our social security number, then our birth date, then our mother's maiden name, <laughs> then our bank account number. All on the table. Yeah. So. Letha says, I assume I'd have to make another account over there and I don't feel like learning a new thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing holding me back from hopping over to Twitch, even though I find its streaming service is just massively uh, better than YouTube. I mean, in theory, YouTube streaming should be getting... They're trying to compete with Twitch. Shouldn't they be getting... doing stuff that's competitive? I shouldn't talk like that. I work in software development. I know how long and ridiculously convoluted things that seem simple from the outside actually are. <sighs> Alright, I seem to have fallen into a pattern of putting a little a little bump at every one of these junctions and I don't know if I want to do that or not. Let's look at Mr. Long Neck, neck Turtle here, shall we? Here's like a medium, a big, small, 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 big, big, big. Eh, maybe I'm doing it right. One thing um, that I'm seeing now, which is good to notice, is that some of the spaces between the lumps are thicker than in other places. I think I've got everything very uniform right now. I don't want to do these little impressions like they're being pulled or pulled around because uh, I need this to tile so there shouldn't be anything that's really defining the edges as an edge. Tiling textures are a unique art form in and of themselves and you know I've been making them on and off in my game art career for going on since, let's see, the first tiling texture I did was, I think for Descent 3, which was in 98? Probably, 18. yeah, Heather was 18, and that is when she knew that she was going to be Mrs. Josh Foreman, because she saw my tiling textures, I was so impressed. Right? I assume that's how that happened. We played a lot of Descent 3. As an 18 year old. Highly unlikely. I worked on I think one thing I am going to do is just kind of fade these out a bit as they go. Because these areas are going to end up overlapping each other. So I probably don't want super highly defined things or they'll be like cutting through each other. Look at this says, me, Mom, Janae, Serena, and Michelle found a few more cool secret places in Super Adventure Box this evening. Awesome. What, uh, what maps were you on? By the way, the secret shop inside a secret shop inside a secret shop is in um, World 1, 3. In the, uh, the poison swamp area, there's these waterfalls 
that um, you can jump through one of them and there's a little welcome mat there which takes you to the first secret shop and then I'll let you figure out from there how to access the secret shop that's inside the secret shop. Are you guys following walkthroughs or are you just doing it organically like actually playing like old school gamers? It always warms the cockles of my heart to hear anyone that's actually actually playing, going in blind and trying to figure it out. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Lita says, Zone 1 of World 2. We found a secret shop with the new stick. Uh, you mean the, the nunchucks? Uh, and then the other cave with the glowy eyed eye, owls. And another cave with a bunch of frogs in it. Oh, yeah, that, that's a scary cave. I almost forgot I made that cave. Is it? Well, that one's that one's in. Um, isn't that in two one? Or is that what you were saying? No, you said zone one. Oh, yes. That is what you were saying. Two one. sure if I want to do like a kind of a round spot or if I want it to kind of be you know more of a bit of a line because those you tend to be able to tile a little bit better sometimes I'm gonna do that basically Something along these lines. almost becomes a, like a diamond pattern that way. A really organic, lumpy, lumpy diamond pattern. Leith says, okay, we'll have to check those out. Some of it we were doing organically, like real gamers, but some of them Serena looked up. Ah, oh, Serena, disappoint me. Like we found as much as we could on our own, then Serena checked to see what we missed. Oh, okay. You know what? I'll accept that. As someone who, uh, for the third time, beat Shadow of Colossus and on the final boss had to look up how to do it, which I've done three times now in my life, um, I, yeah, I would be pretty hypocritical if I was mad at you for that. I'm impressed. I don't even play video games. Yeah, Heather's, Heather's highly impressed. I do love a good Super Mario Brothers 3, though. We do love Super Mario Brothers 3. And it's got a warp uh, whistle, which is similar to one of the items that we put in there. What? Uh, it has a warp whistle, which inspired oh, yeah. a whistle in Super Adventure Box. Well, I also do love uh, on Sega Genesis. You like the Aladdin, Aladdin game on Sega and, Genesis, right? And the Mickey Mouse. Castle, Castle of Illusion. Yeah, that, oh gosh, that game is gorgeous. It's still gorgeous to this day. So fun. One of those that holds up. I'm 
And there was a game on Atari that I really loved. Atari game? And I cannot remember the, the life of me. It's like, because I mean, I was kind of young at the time I looked at the cartoon, yeah. but it was like with an X or Y or something, but it was like a flying game. Mm-hmm. I wonder if now I can get past it. Probably not, but. An Atari flying game with an X. You were like a spaceship, right? I think so. Was it like a like a three quarters view? Like it wasn't straight top down. That was top down. Oh, because I was thinking there's Zaxxon. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Oh, yeah, I that think that was straight down. You just had to you moved up. Is that what you mean? I don't know. Oh, you yeah. looked at the top of it, and you can move up and down to avoid these like electric electricity thingies. But at some point, I mean, plus, I mean, my eyesight, I did not tell how to get through. I did not get very far. Right. So, Zaxxon, uh, find a bigger picture of it. Um, no, I don't want to view saved. Stop. I did the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Don't punish me. Uh, so here's a isometric is the word I was looking for. Zaxxon, 1982. See, did it look like that? You got a little spaceship, and you're kind of flying at three quarters. You. Eyesight. Use your uh, use your eyes. Does that look right? That looks familiar. I probably did not get that far. Oh, okay. But the tank things look familiar. Yeah. But yeah, but you know how it had like those bands of electricity things? Yeah. Is that, yeah, I don't even know if that's, sure that's what it was. One. Like, I mean, I'm completely game not. You're game not, yeah. Not language person. That's the word for it, game not. Yep. Not ready player one. Aletha says, <laughs> hi Heather. Hi Aletha. I got it. Not ready player one, that's what. Yeah, you are not ready, you're not a player, and you're not one. <laughs> I'm not, I'm like... Not even player two. No. Well, you're my player two. Player. You could be my player two any day. I'm like the player that's on the bench, but... But I'm on the bench for the other player that's on the bench for the other player oh, that yeah, is like on the, the back, bench. The backup, backup, backup player. Yes. Someday, I swear, my parents kept coming to watch, and then it was just like, ugh. <laughs> Never picked. Oh, God. There is a pattern in childhood, I have to say. <laughs> games, video games. Although, I did pass. Plants vs. Zombies. What? The first one. Second one, blah. That's dumb. But. Oh my gosh. I did that one. At least it sucked through yeah, that. I have and a I couple co workers who worked on Plants vs. Zombies 2. They're going to be really mad at you for saying that, honey. Well, on number two, it just got ridiculously hard and I was going to pay money. I'd rather have just spent money. However, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I. I like the first one, I could still play it and beat it, and it's fun, and it had all these side games, and it was great, but... They probably worked on the first one, too. I just can't... I love Puzzle Quest, but I think I picked the character that... Oh, yeah, you picked the bard in Puzzle Quest or something, and like I the hardest character her. ever. It's the hard... Uh, maybe I, I don't think... I don't pretty know. much the hardest one. It's the one with the harp or whatever is your weapon. Yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, well... That's probably why it never works, but I mean, I thought I'm pretty damn good with those spells. Like, I got. Oh, sure. I had all top. I had them all top, like everything. And still, the guy's like, boom, boom, dead, ha ha ha. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I don't. What just happened? <laughs> it's like he just got another turn, another turn, boom, oh, dead, yeah. boom. It just keeps falling and falling and falling. And I'm, yeah. It's like the opposite of Peggle, where it's just. I like... tried so hard, and I actually really love that game. And I didn't love the second one very much, but it's because I really, I like the bard. And I even tried playing a different character, but... You seem to have a pattern of liking the first thing. I kept seeking the bard. What? You seem to have a pattern of liking the first of things. The first. Oh. 
Um, no. well, first plants versus zombies. It's because first it got my quest. attention and actually really tried. And yeah. so when the second one comes along, I'm like, eh, we're the same crap. You know? It's like, it, what's the point? Yeah. Because I actually was like you were into, into a game, yeah. and I don't care about games really. Not very often. I'd rather go on a walk or talk, talk to a stranger. Talk to people, yeah. <laughs> you do have a knack for talking to strangers. Today, or tonight, my neurologist, actually last night, my neurologist called me. She's like my headache specialist. And she asked me if I would come. She started this mini seminar. And tonight was the first night, and she asked if I would come and be there and talk. Are you basically giving a testimonial about her procedure? Is that what you were doing? Testimony is difficult. It's not one procedure. There's a billion different ways oh. that they can go after the migraine. And currently, our neurologists, they're not headache specialists, so we all get put through the same routine stuff. But the thing is, they're not headache specialists, and they don't actually even know the why or what is causing chronic migraine. It, and whether it's cluster, whether it's the whatever, all the different ones, it doesn't matter. Chronic migraine is a migraine, is a migraine, chronic, whatever. And each person is different. However, if you know the science behind it, there's really cool things about your brain, basically, because pain is just the signal. It's just your brain. It's all in your head, folks. It's Heard literally it right your, here. it's your brain. It's not in your head, it's in your brain. Yeah. It's your hypothalamus is what is uh, the thing that picks up and translates pain. And so it's overstimulated, so. So just stop, stop well, feeling pain. Well, they have pain. to figure out you know, is the patient, um, some people, maybe they don't produce enough serotonin or, or their receptors aren't uptaking it enough. So there can be different ways to attack that. But also, when you have chronic migraine brain, you see all these crazy other symptoms that go along with it. And so a lot of times, um, patients are put like to all these different specialists and they're all, like everyone wants to put them on this med, this med, whatever. And because, I mean, they're gonna see a lot of times chronic depression, just depression comes with it, chronic pain ever all over the body, uh, fatigue, insomnia, there's like a, a long list of things that go with it just because of chemicals in your brain. And um, it's pretty interesting where it's tied to. So anyways, it's kind of a testimony, but it's a testimony to my treatment. But it wasn't, but I also, it wasn't like, oh, Heather, come say how great I was about this and this, right? Because she's not, it's not really even a testimony, because technically, oh, I don't know what I look like. It's not even technically a testimony, because that, there are HIPAA. That, that's what Heather looks like. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, all of the HIPAA things, right, that are in there. Like, I can't, she's not going to ask a patient to go and tell them everything that they're on, right, or doing. Yeah. Because that's. But I mean, so, you're just talking from a patient's perspective, saying, hey, here's the treatment I, I underwent and how it made me feel, right? I mean, that's, no. that's, no? Oh. No, I actually gave, that's what I was telling you earlier. I don't think she would just ask, like, she has a billion patients. She has patients that she's had for 10 years mm -hmm. that have been migraine free for 10 years. I've been migraine free five weeks. Well, not free, I've had two migraines. But, diminished. Migraine diminished. Yeah, but I would say, first of all, the last one where I was peaking after surgery, that was because I was having a severe allergic reaction. Um, so I don't know if that is really fair to count that one. But either way, it doesn't matter because I stopped to everything that I was doing, which is a really scary thing to do. Oh, so. especially excedrin migraine, right? Yeah, um, because there are a lot of different drugs and medicines that we take, whether over-the-counter or prescription, but when you keep taking them, like chronically or like daily or more than, you know, five to seven times a month, um, it actually makes your brain, in a way, addicted. Because even the thought, like if I say, oh my gosh, if I even think about picking up, et cetera, migraine, mm -hmm. that actually gives me a dopamine rush. 
Yeah. And so it tells my brain because it's like, oh my gosh, it's worked before, right? So you become addicts to the dopamine because I'm also super low dopamine. That's also part of the problem. Like I don't have serotonin and dopamine, all those chemicals that help block pain. None of those are actually really working. So um, anyways, but all, uh, most of those chemicals that are, you know, things that we do, whether prescription or the counter, uh, actually increase um, a chemical called CGRP, and that would stand for a very long list of something that I probably, even reading it, probably would not be able to say it, but CGRP levels, and um, they stumbled by, onto that by accident, and it's actually a huge medical breakthrough, and when there are migraines, that chemical is really high in our bloodstream, mm -hmm. And that gets in the way of everything else from like block, like blocking pain. And so when that chemical goes high from repeated use of these things, that's, that's actually what they mean by a rebound effect. Although when I've asked my doctors and even prior neurologists rebound effect, they don't really, they're like, oh, it's just because you use it and then you stop and then your body gets mad. But it's not, it's not totally it, right? And so, um, They've been FDA approved in developing a CGRP blocker and they have been successful in every study except for when they try to put it in a pill form because it's stored on the liver. So they're making, I think maybe this fall, um, there's going to be an injectable CGRP level. It just like blocks those chemicals from going into your brain. Mm -hmm. And um, it's huge. I mean, hopefully, huge, huge, huge. Yeah, and it's going to be cheaper than Botox. And Botox, you know, there's all those things. Botox is still even she'll, they'll do it there, mm -hmm. but it's not going to work if you're taking Excedrin migraine every single day, or if you're taking. She pretty much had to. Yeah, or if somebody's taking opiates, or if somebody's taking. Like, I'm not allowed, I don't take Tylenol, Aspirin, Ibuprofen, the only thing I can take is Aleve, because Aleve does not boost your CGRP levels. Everything Linux says, I love what you're doing, do you miss clay when doing ZBrush? Which is easier? Um, miss it? Uh, I really enjoy both. They both have their, their thrills and frustrations. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of going into a phase where I'm doing more and more ZBrushing, which um, is kind of annoying to me because I started this channel really, you know, really in the shop, studio, physical stuff, and I like doing those kind of videos. I don't have enough experience in ZBrush to really be doing teaching on it. I'll do live streams where I'm just flailing around, but um, yeah, it's it's frustrating for that reason. Um, but the the advantages are really just speed. You can make stuff so much faster in, in ZBrush, um, and so that's kind of exhilarating to have an idea in and out in you know a quarter of the time or whatever. I mean, having undo, having uh, uh, symmetry, um, being able to save multiple versions and experiment on them in ways that you really can't physically without making molds and stuff. Is but you are not mold, a making mold molds maker. are super not fun. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I do. Ha I do have a series of tutorials that, <laughs> that are coming that. out uh, at some point. Uh, about mold making. That's still definitely a thing that's gonna gonna happen, but I've got I've got some of these things I need to get through first. Mostly speed is a thing because I've got uh, I've got a uh, contract, uh, not a contract. I keep forgetting what the word is when someone pays you to do art for them. No. Uh, oh, now. I yeah, see? Whatever. Once you have to come up with it, it's gone forever. Once you tell your wife, although I remembered it last week. Yeah. Whatever the, I'm, I'm commissioned. Oh. Commissioned. No. Yeah, I'm doing a commission that needs to be done in CG because of the speed with which it needs to be done. 
Uh, I'm doing this character here for these books, uh, which my mom has now written 10 of them and we have not published any of them yet. And Remember when it was like a trilogy? Yeah, and, and it's, like just, it's just ridiculous that it's taken so long, so that's why I'm doing uh, ZBrush on, on this uh, for the book covers and other illustrations. So, so yeah, that's... Uh, the answer is, is yes. I, I do miss doing uh, traditional sculpting when all I've been doing is ZBrush lately. And... Uh, Although I still, I still sometimes squeeze stuff in uh, at work. We have a, a lunchtime sculpting thing we sometimes do once a week. And uh, so I still get to get my hands on some clay from time to time. Alitha, your talk to strangers, that was hilarious. I love it. Yes, I talked to 40 of them. 40 strangers? Tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you have some magical way in which you, when you interact with people, they like instantly like you and want to be your friend. And mm -hmm. so. Maybe. Okay. Although part. there is another neurologist there that I didn't know, but she's being certified to be like an, an actual like migraine specialist. And she was like, oh my gosh, I want you to come to my, my group, my seminars. And my group, whatever appointment things, and I was like, oh, who are you? <laughs> I didn't know who she was. I thought she was there for the thing. <laughs> but, uh, so I think so I know right. a little bit more. And it, so it can't, it's not like a testimony, obviously. So, yeah, Alisa, time to publish those books. So, at some point, don't you think that maybe your putting a lot of pressure and it's taking a lot of time because because I'm trying to get it exactly done yeah, perfectly and it's just kind of right like the first time you yeah. might be missing windows when you can always add on to it or have a link or you know what I mean as you work on these and that might be actually cool is if the people who are reading the books and then they're like oh we're live streaming and we're developing these characters and watch how we make them and that would be actually really cool too to tie it into the world I mean, the irony is, yes, that is actually the whole reason that I decided, yes, we need to get these published ASAP. Uh, and I just told myself what these, what these early publishings are is the first kind of beta versions of the books. Uh, but it has to be balanced with, um, you, can, you can burn through early adapters if your quality isn't quite there and they get the impression that they can just expect some low quality bar out of you and so you can you, this this is based on what I've I, I listen to a lot of self-publishing podcasts and stuff that have a lot of advice and but you're just doing it for the covers right well I'm doing covers I'm also doing all the interior illustrations mm -hmm. and stuff um, well, m most of those are just are just sketches in a sketchbook, so they're not as intricate as all this. Bumps. Yeah, as all these bumps. It's pretty impressive. These lovely lady bumps. Actually, they're they're turtleneck bumps. Well, that is a turtle. All right. So now here is how you do this cool trick. Are you guys ready for this? Alita says, there's a balance between being too much of a perfectionism, uh, but still putting out quality stuff. No, it's too late. You said perfectionism and not perfectionist. You cannot amend your statement. Okay, uh, you go alpha. No, no, no. You go here, alpha, and you're like, uh, grab doc. Because naturally, you're going to grab a doctor when you do this. Okay, so now this is my That's alpha. Out. And I can open my little alpha window here. Uh, actually, let's go to Scola real quick. Boop. Okay. And we're 
going to want to be putting all those bumps all over his arms and body. Might as well start. Oh, that's what happens. His body. Yeah. The allergic reaction? Mm. Yeah, that's what Someone put that's alpha what... all over you. God, I didn't even know. I wasn't even signed up for ZBrush. I don't even play this game. Yeah. I've never played the ZBrush game. Um, what am I doing? I have this alpha loaded. Oh, let me change to my standard brush. Let me change to my bumpy bumps. Drag right. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Oh, let's switch to the proper sub tool first. Okay. So, what we see is it mostly works, except it's got a dumb border thing going on here. And the way to fix that is we go to our alpha and not that oh. modify we want to modify we can modify the fall off which didn't help at all what happens if we turn it all the way up to 10 is that nope doesn't help at all um, let me make sure this is actually doing what I think it's doing. Intensity. I feel like this is not doing anything. Uh, streak length. Is that? Okay. That is indeed doing something. <laughs> that's, that's what my bumps look like. Yeah. It looks, looks like an allergic reaction. Okay, uh, density noise blur, I don't want it to tile, um... But underneath tile, uh, isn't it, there's not a selection under tile? Uh, there is. So you just well, these are tile. horizontal and vertical tiles, that's not what I want to. Um, I can turn my intensity up. Okay, so that just basically no, makes seamless. it pure white, which we don't want. I turn it all the way down. Yeah, it'll be nothing. But that needs to be zero. What's seamless and what's the G the RF? Uh, I think seamless is just has just has to do with the, when it's tiling, and I'm not making it tile, so nothing. It's RF. Uh, good question. Let's see. Oh, that's the one. I do have a knack for it. weird computer stuff. It makes no sense. You should play this game, honey. You're really good at it. <laughs> oh. game. That reminds me. I had my epiphany today that the way that I can do a ZBrush tutorial for my channel would be um, I get two guests. I get one who wants to learn ZBrush and has never touched it. And I grab someone else probably a coworker who's a master at ZBrush. And because what I've been told my skill is when it comes to tutorializing on YouTube is that I'm good at explaining the complicated stuff in easy to understand terms. Um, and so what I could do is basically be the translator as it goes like, okay, put this newbie here. You know, what happens when this problem comes up? I'll give my answer, and then the expert will be like, actually, it's probably better to do this. I'll be like, yes, okay. And then we can just compile a list of things that way. Um, and I think that would actually be a valuable contribution to the learnings that exist on YouTube. I was, I was really struggling with a way to, like, I'm doing more and more ZBrush work. I would love to do tutorials on it, but I would just be teaching a lot of people really bad habits because I'm not a person who's in it, you know, eight hours a day like so many of my coworkers. Uh, let's see, this is still um, jaggy because I assume, let's see, this model is, is one million polygons and it should be more. Right now, is that right? Oh, it's dynameshed. Okay. Do I want to keep it dynameshed, or do I want to retopo this? I want 
honestly don't know what the pros and cons of each are at this point. Although, look at this cool mode. Oh, you can't even see that. Let me move this down so you can see it. This little guy here, this is in the new version, 2018. This uh, is Sculptress Pro Mode. So when that's active, if you go really close, you can see how the lines are really, you know, you can see all those little squares. Uh, now, look what happens when I make a detail. See how the squares got super duper tiny? It's actually um, adding in geometric detail as I work on it. So you don't have to make your entire mesh super detailed which then makes performance uh, harder. Uh, it makes everything slow down. So I'm gonna see what happens if I use my, this with Sculptress mode, will it, that is uh, not what I wanted at all. Let's see, is that because I have Sculptress mode active? Weird, I don't know what that is. Let's turn it off and see if it does the same thing does not huh okay well maybe because it's doing that yeah probably something to do with that I really shouldn't. I don't know. so I'm trying to figure out oh you can't confuse it more than I'm confusing it don't worry yeah because that's all jaggy and low res don't want that I also don't want it well see right now it's 60, let's try, let's try 500 resolution and see if that box stands down too much. Uh, wait, did it do it? There we go, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I've done like 20 karate moves already, and wow. you're just barely seeing it. Yeah. It's like in the matrix. Yeah. All right. So now we have a higher density mesh. Let's see how, how we're looking now. Still pretty chunky. Hmm. Not, not yet. Oh. Yeah, because I mean, these are the size of scales I'm going to have, and it's like, that's. That's not, that's not a good look at all. So, uh, how many, okay, we're at two million polygons. That's up at 2,000, just banana pants levels. Oh, let me make sure I don't have, do I have symmetry on? I do not, good, okay. All right, hold on, guys. We're going to be sucked into the matrix again.
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's under 5 million polygons. That's really, really reasonable. Okay, uh, I'm going to save this real quick before the world blows up again. All right, look what I got, guys. This is, I'm going to make a product that is specifically designed for trolls of a very specific, uh, is it a group? Is it a niche? Okay, here it is. It's a stamp. And it has the word papyrus written in it, in the font papyrus. And you can see here I got actual papyrus bookmarks made out of papyrus. I'm going to stamp the word papyrus in papyrus on the papyrus and sell that as a bookmark. If you care at all about fonts, you will understand why this is hilarious. If you don't, you will not get it. Which means 98% of people won't get it. That's fine. Can you all care about fonts? Just that it's trolling. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. You know, this is. Why does it look so flat on the tips? I did not want it to be flat on the tips like that. I feel like that's not what the. Um, that's not what my actual thing looks like, is it? No. Okay, so something I did. Flattened it. Something in my modifications. Let's find out what that was, shall we? Ah, okay, so our alpha, where's our alpha tools down here? We changed the RF value to get rid of that weird line. Whatever the heck an RF is. So if I turn it back down, does it? Start at zero. Yeah, so at zero. Well, it it's looks like it's there. still cut off like that. Okay, so it's not the RF, probably. Uh, what else did I change? Strength, density, intensity. Did I change the intensity? So we can look at the um, put this here so you can see it better. You can look at the alpha and you can see why it's flattening out. All those areas where it goes pure white, it's flattening. But I don't know why. Yeah, in the areas where it's pure black, it's also you can see in the cracks. Also, it gets super flat in there. I wonder if mucking with the curve would help. Nope. It has to be this intensity? No. Strength. I see all of these are only affecting like how it's getting placed. It's not actually they can adjusting the alpha. They can also do the top part. Besides just the edge, the... I don't know. If I turn fall off way down, yeah, see, it's still, it's not affecting that. So here's, here's the original document that I grabbed. And if I use that, is it it's still technically the seamless? Yeah, where is this? Uh, with the RF up. Oh. It doesn't 
ますって言われて。Alright. Mian Brown is getting fired from my playlist. Uh, just like a couple of musicians from Sucker Punch who made a couple albums that, like, I kind of knew them, so I bought it. was like a pity sale where I bought their album. And it's, it's supposed to be like funky, freeform jazz or whatever, and it's just, it can be pretty annoying. Too funky. A little too funky.、Uh, okay, let's see what's going on here. So, I've got two files here. I've got Brush Alpha and I've got ZGrab01. I don't know. When I select ZGrab01, it's still. It, no, it becomes an alpha. No, it's just me not totally understanding exactly what's going on.、Uh, let's see, what happens if I do it fairly small? One thing I'm seeing is that the fact that I did like a peak in the middle means that these are going to end up not tiling the way I hoped. The size I'm making them, they're still looking kind of like. <sighs> yeah, it's, just, it's not. I'm not getting this. I want this. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. To... No. This guy. <sighs> yeah, I'm just not capturing the beauty that I've created here. Pop out some of these further away so that it doesn't end up. Turning into kind of pyramids all over his skin. A little more、uh, distributed、uh, height. Great. I'm going to see if. So if I go to my standard brush, I say grab dock. Makes this alpha. And when I look at that alpha, I see the full. Depth in there. I'm like, yes, I want this. This should be a thing. Then I go to apply it. Am I getting, am I getting the full depth? That's what I want. I can make it a texture.
Who's this? Oh, that's just different numbers. Okay. Now, I really thought I was going to be able to do another successful thing like I did last time, and it looks like uh, I have failed to be successful. more research offline. Alpha depth factor. Is this always here? This is under transfer. I don't know if that has anything to do. It doesn't look like it. So modifying the RF gets rid of the lines on the side. The further I push it out, the better it does, but the more it fades the edges. Yeah, if I could just get those to be taller bumps, this would be just about perfect. Says, is there a way to soften the stamp things? Well, softening is like the opposite of what I want. I want to make them more extreme. Well, let's see how this looks going over the over the ridges. <laughs> Intensity slider. Look at that. Okay. Let's put it at a reasonable number. That's 35. That's 50. Okay, now that's getting some. That's maybe a little too much, but it's at least getting the actual depth in there. Clever. I know there's a way to actually like tie all this over the whole surface, like a like a textile or whatever. I do not know how to do that yet. Now, uh, it's definitely feeling more turtlenecky. And you know what I could do is go in with like my inflate brush and just like call out a few here and there. Just keep it keep it interesting.
This is doing a really good job of adding um, tertiary details without without wiping out the definition of the secondary, you know, the the folds and the floppy flesh that I've got there. Looks like even overlapping multiple times doesn't seem to be hurting the effect at all. Even though when I, I bumped up the intensity so I can see a little bit of line here and there a bit, but um, it's not, you know, it's, it's so subtle that by the time you put anything else over it, it gets pretty much obliterated, so. Get rid of this side of the body. Out of the way, side of the body. Someday there will be a stamp that you can drag out and that it will conform to the normals of all the faces it's going over instead of just being a straight projection based on the normals of the where you click first. That's when you see it like um, stretching over the edges, that's what's causing that. See how it's like this scale is all uh, elongated? It's because I clicked right here where it's like facing that way, but as it goes over that curve, it's like stretching. Just like if you shone a flashlight over an area that's uh, kind of tilted away from you, you'd get that same effect. Pre says, is that a texture you made or does the program you're using come with pre-made textures? Or is it like Lightroom where you can download specific textures and install them? Uh, Caprice, it is all of the above. And also welcome to the stream. Uh, so there, you can easily get your hands on a million uh, different patterns and stuff. Here's what just comes with it is all these kind of random weird ones. Um, but this one I specifically made by, um, I made this, whoop, this flat plane and sculpted this texture on it and then grabbed that as its own texture. And now I'm applying it to Scola's arm here.
I'm, I'm trying to capture the texture on this cute little turtle's neck. That's pretty much exactly what I've been wanting to do. And that's uh, just uh, the other day I happened across that picture of that turtle on Twitter. I was like, ah, that's the one. I think that's all right. It's quite a deep cavity in there, but. I think I nailed it. Thank you. show you what um, is going on on the rest of them. So this texture that I've got going on on his head here um, was made mostly by hand sculpting every single one of these things and then just applying a more um, just from a, a texture library these little scales and um, other kind of finer details. I'm getting concerned that no when I move the camera back far enough to see the whole arm it's like there's plenty of resolution there but like when I'm down here in the trenches I'm thinking oh man I can see all those little all those little squares but you know, there's by the time this is well specifically I'm thinking of rendering it at like a super high resolution um, that you might be able to make out some of those but i think by the time you put lighting on there and color information those will be completely lost and certainly 3d printing uh this there's no way that the resolution of the print would pick up any of those any of those um jaggies Blending pretty well into the bigger nubbins I've got up here. The artisanal handcrafted nubbins. Although it might, uh, might be breaking them up a little too much. says I'm sure you've answered this before but when sculpting this way do you miss the tactile sensation on your fingers and things like the smell of clay uh, yeah actually <laughs> someone literally just asked that like an hour ago or half an hour ago um, yeah uh, smell no uh, but yeah there's there's things that I definitely miss uh, from the physical world when I'm doing it this way and uh, but the more I the more I learn digital sculpt, the more I get frustrated with uh, limitations of uh, physical clay as well. Of not being a, the, the thing, the single biggest thing that I wish I could do in physical 
is um, iterate, where I just make a copy of this and try something completely different, and I could always just undo it if I don't like it. Um, that's to me the biggest limitation because it's such a it's a design limitation um, in the real world. Hey Caprice, don't feel bad. That was uh, literally the first time anyone ever asked me that today. So uh, twice in a twice in one day is no big deal when it's never been asked before. I think I'm getting closer to what I want by um, hand merging these guys in. Like a nice hand dipped milkshake. Which I, I still don't know what that is and it sounds really gross. And I don't know why that's ever advertised. Like would having your milkshake dipped by a machine make it worse? fun just kind of coming in and finding where the confluence of lines starts to suggest that another larger nubbin should be there. Well, what's really nice about this is you get some you get some flow, some movement to it, which is uh, always a delightful design element is to get some repetition with movement because you could end up with very static repetition but organic animals uh, need to have organic flowing repetition Another thing that keeps distracting me as I'm working is I keep thinking about how I want to make a modification of this guy um, in his fully inflated form because he's like a puffer fish where if he gets scared or upset or angry he can inflate and all his spines stick out and his little arms would be like puffed out of the side of his big sacky flesh. I'm like, oh, do I want to... Um, It's easy to derail myself personally as an artist when I start trying to make things too... Um, I start thinking too far ahead. Is that what's going on? I'm trying to make things as generalizable as possible so I don't have to do rework. mushy areas in here. I feel like if I do this, it'll run into problems. But it doesn't seem to, which is nice. I think thanks to using, like having this reference where I see how there's such a huge variation in the size of the nubbins and the cracks in between the nubbins, uh, so having, when they overlap, they kind of naturally create some of that, some of that noise in the repetition, which is good.
I love this shader for reptile skin. I, I try not to leave it on all the time just because it's not, it doesn't give you the most accurate sense of form, but it definitely gives the feeling of reptilian skin because it lightens in the cracks instead of darkening in them. You can see, like, inside the cracks is lighter than the outside. Except down here, where it kind of shifts. That's really interesting. Especially here, look at that. It's all, like, dark lines and very white bumps. But generally, if you're doing reptiles, dinosaurs, that kind of thing, um, doing the cracks a lighter color really gets that sells that look finish this sleeve that'll be a good good stopping point oops that's creepy if you have uh, trypophobia look away because uh, having skin like that would be really bad He says, art question, if I draw an apple, I look at the page and see the apple is already there and it's just my job to trace it. Do you see art that way or do you build the image as you go? Hmm. I think, I think whenever I start with a super firm um, kind of exact idea in my head, I get really frustrated that I can't get it on the page. Uh, for two-dimensional art for drawing because you have to do all these all these technical tricks to get the perspective and the shading and all that kind of stuff whereas with sculpting you get free perspective and shading and uh, I'm much better at achieving my my precise goals with sculpting Probably why I don't know what the percentage is, but a lot of sculptors I know are just better sculptors than they are 2D artists, and I think it's just because they're not as good artists as people who are, you know, really good at uh, both at 2D and 3D. Um, I have a friend at work who's like incredible at both but you know he does concept art for uh big hollywood movies and stuff so um yeah he's just mega talented and uh when mega talented people get into 3d turns out they could do uh 3d better than those of us who can do 3d but can't do 2d as well Neon brown strikes again. But do you get it? Neon brown. It's a. It's a. Uh, there's a word for that. What is that called? Um, oxymoron. It's like iron butterfly or lead zeppelin. Do you get it? Can't be neon and brown. They contradict. When I was, I want to say 10 through 12, I went through two phases within two years. Uh, one was always wanting to wear nothing but camouflage, including like socks and belts and shoes. I had to have camouflage of all of those. 
And the only reason I could do this is because uh, my mom could sew and she loved me a little too much and uh, so much so that she would she would accommodate by whims and make me stuff that I couldn't uh, find or buy. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, for about a year I wore nothing but camouflage. And then the next year I wore nothing but fluorescent. I had a fluorescent belt, fluorescent socks, fluorescent shoes, fluorescent backpack. I was a weird kid. All right, look at that arm. That is a that's a sexy arm right there. Calling it now, sexy arm. Reference again, just to make sure I'm not missing it. Although usually, like after I've been working for an hour or so on a, any particular task, it's always helpful to step away and come back to it a day later and look at it, and be and suddenly my eyes will be open to things that I obviously overlooked. Capri says, "What year would you guess this was?" Uh, the years that I went through my two phases, uh, let's see, I was born in 75, so it probably was around 85, 86, 87, somewhere in that range. Mid 80s. I think I think this reads at a distance pretty well, um, which it, it needs to if it's going to cover his whole body and not be just like super noisy, you know. Look at it in a couple other surface treatments. Like in this one, the repetition is really obvious. Like it stands out. Where the, where the center of the stamp was, where it was strongest. Uh, why? I don't know. In sketch, it does not stand out at all. In this ivory, it does. Hmm. So this, this kind of default gray is generally considered about the best for for helping you to actually see what's happening topographically, um, the other the other shaders can hide stuff because they're kind of stylized. They're not the way real light really works. Um, but yeah, I could definitely like as I come in, I can see yeah, here's a middle, here's a middle, here's a middle, here's a middle, and here's this dead zone right there. And so hey, let's. Get rid of that dead zone and see what happens. Like honestly, I don't know if it's good or bad that there are area you know, areas that are a little more restful than others. But because it's CG, I can easily undo if I don't like what it ends up doing. unlike texture stamps and meat space. My fluorescent phase, yeah, that would have been 86 or 87, I would guess. Which I feel like, no, neon brown again, stop it. Um, I feel like that was a year like before that year I don't think I'd ever seen neon fabric or 
plastic or material, anything. Like maybe the technology to create that, um, to create neon uh, as a pigment had just been invented for all I know. Ah, okay. I feel, I'm feeling good. I did a thing uh, successfully. I'm sure uh, next time I can apply it to this arm like a lot faster. And who knows, maybe even get maybe even get the body done. Wow, that would that would be exciting. That'd be super exciting. I still need to finish detailing the hands, don't I? That'll probably have to be its own its own episode. Anyway, yeah, a uh, good place to cut it off. And thanks for joining me, everyone. Uh, thanks, Heather, for chiming in from time to time. And uh, we'll. She has her headphones in, she can't hear. And uh, um, I've got nothing else to say. So see